everybody this is mxux this is just a uh, video going over the political ramifications of the usps contract and how it affects uh, workhorse and lordstown hope you like it hi this is mxux uh a, a comment suggested this and uh in talking about lordstown uh we have workhorse which is a 10 percent shareholder in Lordstown Motors. Uh, Steve Burns was the CEO of Workhorse. He left to start Lordstown Motors. The uh, Endurance was the Workhorse E5, W15, I believe, uh, before uh, Workhorse uh, gave the rights over to Lordstown Motors for a 10% stake in it. So the two companies are closely related. As I mentioned in my last video, it was widely felt that Workhorse would get at least a portion of the new postal uh, vehicle contract uh, with the United States government and that that would likely be built production wise at Lordstown and I think this had a lot to do with Lordstown doing the machining for the high top van and uh, in any case the, 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 a postal vehicle for example could have been produced on the line based on the on the uh, Lordstown Motors van at the same time as the uh, Endurance was being produced on the line, on the same line at the same time. Anyway, I think that's what everybody thought the game plan was. I thought uh, Kathy Woods thought that was what the game plan was. And Workhorse didn't get the contract. So anyway, uh, a, a comment suggested that we look into the lawsuit. I, uh, and I'm going to try to just go over some highlights on this. Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. So this is Workhorse versus the United States. This is about the uh, post-award bid protest challenge uh, of the uh, uh, next generation delivery vehicles uh, to the uh, postal service that was awarded to Oshkosh Defense. Uh, and they say that... Uh, this procurement uh, were arbitrary, capricious, and without rational basis. So, uh, Workhorse got uh, run over by Oshkosh Defense, who really builds like armored personnel carriers and things of that nature. Uh, not really big on uh, delivery vehicles. Don't do any electrical ve electric vehicles. Anyway. Uh, and it states here, well, they got the contract, Workhorse didn't. And then Workhorse is uh, say, stating here that had they done it fairly, Workhorse would have been awarded the contract. I think we could have counted on Workhorse to, to have been awarded at least some of the contract, okay? Uh, I think everybody was expecting them to, to split it up between ICE vehicles and electric vehicles, for example. Anyway, let's just go through this. Uh... The USPS invited Workhorse to uh, to bid. They spent six years and six million dollars developing a next generation political vehicle to meet the USPS specs. Now, they did all this and then they went into testing. And what happened was they blamed uh, workhorse's prototype vehicle for a safety incident was clearly the result of the USPS driver. So they rejected workhorse's proposal because of this safety incident. And uh, we'll go over that in a minute. Anyway, uh, letter and spirit of the NGV program. Uh, experience successfully designing and building last mile delivery vehicles. Uh, they uh, all uh, electric vehicle from the ground up they designed for the USPS. So anyway, the point is uh, they didn't get it. And they designed a specific vehicle just for them and so on. So uh, the USPS uh, announced uh, they selected Oshkosh for the $3.1 billion contract. Now, First, the selected Oshkosh vehicle uses an internal combustion engine with 10% of the production vehicles potentially being electric. 
So this is against, we're going to go see in a minute, this is against Biden's executive order to make an electric fleet. And, uh, you know, the trends. I mean, these, these ICE trucks are going to be totally obsolete in, you know, five years. They're, they're, they aren't going to be able to give them away. And they're going to be inefficient. So, anyway. Uh, yeah, everyone's moving to zero emission fleets. Anyway, quickly as possible. Now, well-established electric vehicles are some, uh, significantly lower cost of ownership and uh, vast savings on fuel uh, and maintenance dramatically outweigh the additional. So, anyway, they committed to 165,000 ICE vehicles for three billion dollars that are going to be obsolete in five years and 10 percent might be potentially be electric over workhorse which had a hundred percent electric vehicle that was designed specifically for uh for the uh uh usps now here's a very very good this is really cool uh, Oshkosh uh, submitted drawings and then they showed a vehicle completely un uh, unlike uh, uh, the uh, Ford transit based prototypes that were put through the UPS's testing. So the point is. <laughs> They submitted drawings of one vehicle. Uh, they tested another vehicle, and then they decided the vehicle on another. Uh, decided the contract on another vehicle, which had skipped the prototype phase altogether. Okay, so they don't even. They didn't even prototype this thing. Okay, the vehicle that's going to be built. And Oshkosh has never previously produced a last mile delivery vehicle, much less an electric one. So, you know, there's Ford again. Well, what the heck? So they got a, a, a ICE vehicles from a contractor that never made a last mile delivery, that had a pro that for with a truck design that was never prototyped, never tested, and it was awarded a billion dollar contract for you know hundreds of thousands of vehicles the USPS would pay Oshkosh 482 million simply to finish the development of a concept okay before a single truck is delivered there you go another five always a 500 million with these car companies so not only are they are they giving them the contract without a prototype they're paying them to to develop a concept and a prototype and when workhorse submitted a prototype that was working anyway you can go through this yourself pause the video and reread all this it's totally ridiculous they steamrolled the oshkosh into this thing without even testing the vehicle okay emblematic of uh, unfair treatment of workhorse of uh, uh, the USPS unfair treatment is its repeated citation of alleged roll away incident okay this is why they said they would never have uh, selected a workhorse okay what happened was while they were testing the prototype which Oshkosh never you know the, the Oshkosh contract is based on a prototype that was never submitted or tested by the post office and they're paying them a half $500 million to develop it. Uh, Workhorse's truck was there and they tested it and they were going through the prototype testing and so on and so forth. And what happened was, you can read this here, uh, a driver was testing the vehicle and he stopped the vehicle. He left it in drive and got out to deliver a package and the, and the truck took off and rolled into a ditch. And they said, hey, the guy left the thing in park. Okay, he didn't apply the parking blades. He jumped out of the vehicle and it rolled down a slope into a ditch. So they're they're saying that this was operator error. It wasn't the cause the design uh, of the truck that caused this. It was because it was parked on a hill. It was left on a hill in drive, and the driver got out and it rolled down the hill, which makes perfect sense. 
And they, they said, this is why I could not have awarded a contract. By the way, if you wanted to set up this test to fail, I mean, this would be the perfect way to do it, wouldn't it? Uh, whether, uh, I mean, I think, uh, I think any, uh, any car would do this. Or maybe I'm wrong, but I'm sure that this is a very common thing. I mean, especially when you're operating a delivery vehicle, th those guys, I see them pull that brake up hard every time they stop. So I, anyway, this is why they said they wouldn't do it. So the guy left it in drive, got out of the truck, and it rolled down a hill into a ditch. And they blamed that on workforce. Could you make, well, maybe you could make a case that there should be a fail safe in there. I don't know. I, I think this is ridiculous. I think they have some grounds here, you know, not in park. Anyway, so because of this, they gave it to a company that doesn't have a prototype and they paid them to develop the prototype and the prototype is going to be an ice truck that's going to be, oh, you get the, you get the meaning. So we're just going to go through this. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, workhorse, uh, American manufacturer creates all delivery. This is all it does is all electric delivery trucks and drones says uh, things. Uh, optimizes the way these, uh, in fact, Workhorse is the only company with a fully electric last mile delivery truck on the road in the United States. And it's the only company in the world that has an electric uh, delivery truck with integrated aerial drone system, which could have also been used by the post office very well, by the way. You know, these guys, they have, they're way past the prototype. They got the C100 and the C6600, the C1, uh, C1000, whatever the two truck designations are, which are really good trucks. I have video on this in another video of mine. Drivers love them. There's, you know, they're electric last mile delivery trucks. Unlike the Amazon, you know, indentured servant van they're trying to come out with Rivian, which is going nowhere fast. And it looks like it's snapped together. Anyway, these are real uh, commercial trucks, and they do a great job where course does. They should have got a portion of this, at least. They should have got the whole thing, really, because this should be an electric fleet. Anyway, and we're just going to go down here. The USPS have a fleet of over 200,000 vehicles, and 163 are at the end of their life. So... Uh, we'll just go down here. Workhorse submitted a fully electric delivery vehicle at the prototype phase, which it designed and constructed entirely from scrap, uh, scratch to meet or exceed the USPS requirements. In stark contrast, Oscar submitted a Ford Transit-based Ford again vehicle. An already electric, electric vehicle with a Ford Transit chassis and customized body. Again, we're going to get into Ford in a second here. Uh, so we're just going to go through this. And this is a long... You guys can download this and read the whole thing if you want. You know how lawsuits are. It's kind of boring. I think there's one more section that is of interest to us here. Let me see if I can find it. Anyway, again... Ah... It, it came. It became apparent that for the production phase, Oshkosh proposed an entirely different vehicle than the Ford Transit-based vehicle it had submitted, and, the, and that the agency had tested at great length and expense for the prototype phase. They didn't even buy the vehicle they tested. Okay, they didn't even. Now they bought a vehicle that wasn't tested, that was never prototyped. They're paying them the prototype. So they didn't take any bids on this thing. They gave the whole thing away to a company that's never built an electric vehicle before, that's never built a last mile vehicle, delivery vehicle before, uh, that doesn't have a prototype that was tested by the post office, that hasn't even designed a prototype yet. Now, this new proposed design, however, remains a, con uh, a conventional internal combustion engine vehicle. Again, going to be totally obsolete in five years, okay? 
which Oshkosh claims can be retrofitted to be electric. Now here's the rub. I have down here Ford. They have stated publicly that they have already contracted with Ford to supply the batteries and the motors to convert 10% of this fleet to electric, this production to electric. Although Ford can't even meet their own demand and has no capability to do this for a truck that doesn't even exist yet. That this they're, they're, they're gonna pay the prototype, that they awarded a billion dollar uh, value of the contract, $3.1 billion, two, okay? Again, four, Oshkosh, you know, no capability for to supply batteries or electric motors. And uh, Oshkosh never built a last mile delivery vehicle. Man, oh man. Uh, Oshkosh, Oshkosh acknowledge in a November 2020 filing with the SEC that while sales of electric powered vehicles are increasingly important, that's an understatement, Oshkosh may not have the expertise or resources to successfully address these pressures on a cost-effective basis or at all. And I'm going to add, this goes likewise to Ford. Okay? Ford isn't going to be able to supply any meaningful input to this production probably for another five years in my estimation so anyway this award came shortly after biden's executive order directing procurement of clean and zero emission vehicles for the federal state local and tribal government fleets including vehicles of the united states postal office so what is going on here i would love to know this doesn't make any sense at all um why isn't somebody investigating this? Why isn't somebody getting to the bottom of this? I mean, this this has been uh, investigated. Uh, Postmaster Louis DeJoy, Congressional. 10% of the Oshkosh fleet would be electric, unless could not be electric, unless the USPS receives a, a, an additional 3 to $4 billion. Only 10% of the new fleet could be electric, unless they get another $4 billion. Okay? So for the uh, for the how many billions they got? Uh, what was the amount? Uh, uh, whatever you know, they get ten percent maybe. Okay, if they want more than that, it's going to cost them three or four billion. Would it be? Okay, Sherrod Brown, Senator Sherrod Brown, Tim Ryan, and uh, wrote a, wrote a letter to President Biden. Where is Biden on this? What, what, what the heck? Award an initial contract to provide up to 165 bill over the next day without any commitment to making these electric vehicles, or or uh, either hybrid or 100% electric. Again, you're gonna have 165,000 vehicles that are gonna be total white elephants in five years. You're not gonna be able to give them away. The cost savings to the taxpayers, gone. Uh, the vehicle to grid battery that this would have formed to help take the stress off our, which I covered in another uh, video, which would help take the stress off our ve uh, our electric grid for the electric vehicles that are becoming online. Imagine this 165,000 electric vehicles with vehicle to grid, which could act as storage ve uh, for the grid when there was overproduction of energy and could supply from those 165,000 vehicles energy back into the grid when the demand was high, including charging the vehicles. This is such a missed opportunity. And uh, over the next day, yeah, without any commitment to making these either hybrid or electric, uh, requested the contract be delayed. <laughs> that there was not inappropriate to determine. If there was not inappropriate political influence in the process, 
All right. So again, I just want to say, uh, I don't know what's going on here. Again, this is tangentially related to uh, the political football uh, that Lordstown Motors has become because, again, Trump was uh, heavily influenced in the startup of Lordstown Motors and they are out to get Trump. Uh, it seems to me, I don't know how Biden could have been unaware of this, okay? And Biden was trying to, uh, I don't believe he can take the joy out of the postmaster general role because it's some type of appointment rule. But uh, the joy was a uh, Trump appointee. But I'd like to add to this as well, inappropriate political influence. Well, you know, Ford Motor again is all over this. And I want to tell you something else. There was massive stock options and massive shorting of workhorse before this came out. And there was a uh, massive buying of Oshkosh before this came out. So this was a total uh, inside baseball deal again. And this is corruption. And why isn't the Department of Justice, you know, they're, in, they're, they're uh, investigating uh, Steve Burns and the uh, Manhattan District Attorney. Why doesn't the Manhattan District Attorney look into this? I don't understand what the... Uh, what the rationale is of all the prosecution of Steve Burns is when this is going on. Okay. Anyway, that's all I have to say for this. I hope you like that. <laughs> Bit of a rant. You can get this. I'm going to put a link or you have to look this up. It's hard to find. It's been redacted. It's been sealed. I don't know exactly how I got this. You can see some of it's blacked out. Anyway, you can play this back slowly and you can pause it and you can read these sections for yourself. This whole thing is ridiculous. Okay, everybody, I hope you liked that. That was a very, you know, how this could have been awarded and how it's not being investigated by the Department of Justice and how the New York District Attorney isn't investigating this. And, you know, the question is, again, I don't know. The joy was a Trump appointee. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Does this, uh, of course, this influences Lordstown. I mean, this has affected the potential success of Lordstown greatly, and obviously the potential success of Workhorse. So I think this should be investigated. I don't know. This this whole thing is starting to smell like a rotten kettle of fish to me. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it.